Hi everybody! Here we again in uh, the beautiful then laboratory for uh, decentralized application. My name is Svet Sedov and uh, I am angel investor as well as a uh, coder. And with me today is our knowledgeable and uh, usually very skeptical instructor, Elliot. Hello everyone, I'm Elliot. I'm the blockchain program director here at The Den. Here we help people accelerate their blockchain careers. Today I'm here with Sved and essentially we're here to talk about this new currency that I've come across that's come to my attention. And their aim is essentially to make private smart contracts. So currently we have smart contracts on Ethereum. We have smart contracts on Tons of, we have smart contracts on EOS, we have smart contracts on Cardano. Everyone is, you know, blockchain 3.0 is smart contracts, right? But in my eyes, there's a lot of untapped potential for smart contracts if everyone can see what's going on inside of a smart contract, right? For example, a land deed. You may not want everyone to know that you own a $10 million mansion in the hills, right? You might want only the government and you to know that. So there's this new uh, coin called Dero. And what they have done is they essentially started off as a Monero fork. So they forked Monero's co code, uh, deployed it, and then they found that there were some major, and what they wanted to do was build smart contracts on top of a crypto note chain. So crypto note is essentially a, a ring mixing protocol that allows you to uh, shuffle money in a way that whenever you send money, no one can really see where that money came from or where it went or how much it was. So basically it's the same as putting the, uh, uh, say, black ball in a um, big pool of the black balls and then taking another one and then you cannot really tell which balls you put in whether it was yours or not. Because it's all mixed up. Providing of course that the balls are of the same size, that's why your transaction might be split to say $5 or $50. The technology which you try now to defend against mine and slot is actually coming from that respected pool of the cryptographically protected currency as money as a cash and others, right? Yes. So what they did was they had now the code of Monero and they deployed that. That was their uh, network for 95,000 blocks. And around, I think, 97,000 or 95,000, they hard forked. So they went from a linear blockchain, right, just a regular blockchain, to now a DAP. So this was Atlantis, right? And so Atlantis was essentially protected against a lot of attacks that were happening with Monero. So people were attacking the Monero network, and the guys at Dero figured out, well, if we make this blockchain into a DAG, so now it's no longer just a linear data structure, we can go prevent attacks. And so the innovation with Dero is that, okay, let's say me and you mine a block at the same time, right? Where we can get a problem here is if I mine a, a, a transaction and, or let's say I send a transaction to an exchange of 100 million Dero, I sell all my Dero, okay. get Bitcoins, take the Bitcoins out. Now, on my private computer, I go generate a ton of blocks, and I generate a, a longer chain that's on the current, than is on the current chain, and I don't include my transaction to that exchange in all these blocks I'm generating. And now I go show the whole network, hey guys, here's the longest valid chain, and now the money that I sent to the exchange, the exchange no longer owns it because that transaction didn't actually happen. Right, so that's kind of a, a vulnerability in blockchain, which is a 51% attack. Yes, you need to have more hash power or more voting power in case of the right. uh, state. But what Dero did was they said, let's make it a DAG now. So now, instead of it being a linear blockchain, now let's say we both find a block at the same time. One person, we both have valid blocks. Your block is now considered a side block. And we filter out any double spends between these two blocks that were mined at the same time. So now we've effectively prevented a 51% attack with this really new smart way to design a blockchain. 
So you're saying that uh, just to simplify for me, like uh, uh, mere uh, kind of beginner in all of those um, uh, your technological uh, coin type of things to say that your coin which you're now talking about is it basically the crossbreed between Monero and EOS oh sorry Monero and EOTA of course because IOTA, IOTA which is a well-known cryptocurrency for automated devices or internet of things devices they also use these uh, directional asynchronic graphs which you basically asynchronic asynchronic graphs which you basically just which you now describe am i correct yes but the thing you're missing though is Dero is a block dag so it's a uh, it's a directed acyclic graph of blocks iota they call it the tangle is a directed acyclic graph of transactions, transactions. Yes, so this I is a that. more efficient design where you can just go put a ton of data in the blocks instead of just having a, just a huge mess of all these transactions that are just make one huge deck. And you increase your throughput, right? Yes. Dramatically. So, yes. so the throughput right now is 75 transactions per second because each block is one megabyte and the block time is around 12 seconds. So that means that you know you can fit a lot of transactions per block in order to fill up that one block size. I don't actually buy that because I heard that critique from the mouth of the big four developers, which actually, uh, which their major argument is that that have absolutely not scientific base for clean being cryptographically protected at the same way. Or even near the same level as a proof of work algorithm. But the block DAG has the Monero uh, Crypto Knight algorithm that's used for the proof of work. So it's a DAG, so you essentially have a blockchain, but now you can have multiple um, blocks that point to a previous block. So now you can add on like side blocks, and to make to compute those side blocks, you have to do a proof of work. That's so correct. I believe it is secure. Yeah, but we're talking about the consensus algorithm. So Dero also has uh, bulletproofs, and so they have essentially, because they have a very smart team and talented developer team, they have uh, made their own implementation of bulletproofs, which are actually uh, 15 to 20 times faster than Monero bulletproofs. Yeah, I see that. I, I, I already sold on the argument of uh, how of the throughput. So that, that, that I think was a smart and very con uh, convenient part of that technology. But I, I'm very much skeptical on it that, because again, I have never seen any scientific or like uh, published and the peer reviewed paper which proves that that actually can withstand all of the known types of attack again on a consensus level I'm not questioning transaction out there because so, I believe that snark snarks or uh, about proofs sufficient enough they use the kryptonite algorithm mm -hmm. to essentially for proof of work so it's the same algorithm so it's that Monero basically uses. modified proof of work algorithms which and they use DAG for double security or why they double security? So yes. they kind of, or probably maybe they use DAG for increasing throughput. I guess we now have kind of covered what it is and what the general idea is. So That's we're going to have a DAG, it's going to be using ring signatures uh, and the CryptoNight protocol for proof of work. and. It is essentially a crypto note rewritten in Golang, right? And there, there are plans to make smart contracts on top of the network, which is the real innovation, right? Now you can interact with smart contracts privately. And I already expressed my like a criticism and skepticism on this that level, but uh, who knows? Because Bitcoin, for example, Satoshi implemented Bitcoin algorithm without this actually eight page paper without any scientific proof. So that's maybe one of the mm, 
strongest argument against all these academical type of the objections? So it launched in December of 2017. So it's turning uh, one year old, uh, I guess this December, so in a few months. And it I think has really uh, struggled with publicity and outreach because the developers are really genius cryptographers, but their focus is not really on marketing. So essentially that's why I'm here, because I think that it's a great technology and people should learn about it and understand it, especially when they're about to go launch a new platform where I can go build smart contracts on top of it, because that really gets me excited, right? In terms of applications, now we can store consumer data on the blockchain. If we can have, if you can send your encrypted data to, an encrypt, to a smart contract, the smart contract can decrypt that data and perform computations on it and re-encrypt it, or if the smart contract is homomorphically encrypted, and now it can, and you can send it encrypted data, and it can do uh, operations on encrypted data, now that's an even, even better design. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that they understand how to implement it. It really is just, how do we get the word out about it? Can I have my two Satoshis, skeptical Satoshis on the front? So uh, what, he's, what you're saying is that uh, that team had a victim of that December craze on cryptocurrency and became shadowed by multiple other projects who spring in life like uh, uh, cockroaches from all the corners, from the, all the dark corners of the blockchain world. When you see these smart contracts come out, right? And now it's not just, oh, there's some promise of smart contracts in the future. You see, well, these guys built a virtual operating system on top of a, a chain that they rewrote from scratch, and this all works together. I think then, and I, I'll go show you applications I'll build on top of it, I think you'll be a lot more, or a lot less skeptical, because mm -hmm. you'll see maybe there is some value proposition here. And I talked to the developers personally, and they told me that they can integrate so that the blockchain and smart contracts can talk to the outside world. So currently, if you want to develop smart contracts on top of Ethereum and you want to base, you know, how your contract works on some outside event, it's almost impossible to do or very hard because you have to use oracles and you have to trust them and you have to pay them a bunch of money. But now they're saying they understand how to build these operating systems from scratch and they're going to integrate these smart contracts and be able to communicate with outside sources. It's just not a secret that money or the cash uh, potentially other, uh, I would say, dark currencies uh, might have a serious difficulties on the level of official acceptance for obvious reasons. So what about that cryptocurrency we sprung right out from that root of currencies which makes their purpose goal and the essence of existence to hide? Don't you think that governments will be, put it mildly, against such type of technology? So how will you survive that? But you oh, could yeah. make the same kind of argument for cash, right? I mean, cash is anonymous, essentially. Once you have a, a bill, it, they can't track who's spending it for what, right? So I think that once you see a legitimate use case, and in my mind, that's asset registries. So if you can only prove to selected people that you own assets, like the government, or maybe a, lo a lender, someone who's giving you money, and you're, you, know, you need to have some collateral, I think that's a very legitimate use case of these private smart contracts. Because you could have a smart contract, it's private, and it has all the data about asset registries. And so now you can own a house, you can own a Lamborghini, you can own whatever, no one can know that you own it unless you go and prove to them that you actually own that asset. Okay, that's a very great uh, objections, but I mean, the idea was let's put all of these houses and land into the publicly verifiable digital format. And what you're saying is exactly going that direction. And I cannot do less than applaud for that. However, why do you think these records must be anonymous? Shouldn't be them? Uh, more available to public scrutiny if they follow that, obviously, this sort of type of uh, economic prosperity for everybody. Scenario. I think that people should have the right to anonymity, right? If you own, if you have a lot of wealth, you 
probably don't want a lot of prying eyes coming in and disturbing your privacy in you know, your home, which is kind of a sacred place. So I think that there's something to be said for things need to be in the open. And I, and I agree with that. But I think that only certain things do need to be in the open, right? Like, you maybe, maybe you don't need to know who owns every single property, but, you know, you, you could go maybe put tax returns or proof of a tax return public, right? So that we all understand that you're an upstanding citizen and you abide by the laws. So I think there's kind of a, a shift where it's some data should be private and some should be public. Some kind of right balance. Exactly. Just like with social media, your data is being made public to everyone. I feel like that's a total invasion of privacy, right? Because essentially an advertising agency comes along to Facebook and they go and they can directly target you based on all your interests. And so that's a, an invasion of privacy and I feel that's wrong. But there are other things maybe that should be public. And I guess how we draw that line, it's, it's hard to figure out. So basically what you're saying is that, again, consumers, users must have a choice. Yes. And actually I like that, so, because I'm kind of a proponent of free market. And I think that it is extremely important to give uh, maybe a limited number of people the opportunity to hide their identity for a good purpose. However, still there is that question. Uh, I doubt that there is a, even one government in the world who would kind of say, yes, we're standing behind that. But who knows? Future is unpredictable. All of us know as new generation of new political leaders will come and kind of change. They can change the laws. They can change approach and they can change mentality. Let's say you're an actor. You're a very famous movie actor. Yeah, we are. I mean, you wouldn't want the general public to know where you live. They would go when they go constantly harass you and go try and not. Yeah, yeah. Door. Publish my naked photos. Yes. Publish your naked photos. Unacceptable. Yeah. Exactly. No. So, I think there definitely are real use cases for this technology. It's just we have to find the line of exactly where it fits into society. And I think that governments would actually embrace this technology if they understood it helps keep citizens private, but accountable to governments. So you don't have to go show your information to your neighbors or to everyone around you of all the assets that you own. But the government requires, if you're gonna register an asset, you register it through this platform and so no one else can yeah. see it and it's secure on this blockchain and they know that you own it, but then no one else around that isn't supposed to know will not know, right? They, yeah. they will not get access. I agree. Yeah. No, I think that you practically sold me on that part, but still. I have this reservation in power of this. I'll wait for So, Sven, thank you. Thank you for coming on today. So, please, you can conclude that uh, our sessions yep. because you score a really good one for me. Yep. Thank you all for coming out and watching today. I think we had a very good discussion about this technology and if it really has a real use case, which I feel that it does. Yeah, go Thank use you. it. Yeah. However, of course, you shouldn't listen to us. You always go to online, find the white paper, read it, make your own choice. Our purpose is that, my purpose here is only to inform you and to present our opinion. Whether you value this opinion or not, it's up to you. Okay, thank you very much. Here was uh, Seth Sadov and Elliot, our instructor. See you next time. Bye-bye.